I've been volunteering as a doctor here in the Philippines. I've seen and experienced some crazy things. It's been hard, but I've been happy. Here are three lessons on happiness that I'm gonna take home with me. I'm so grateful that people have been watching my last few videos on my volunteering experience here in the Philippines. There's been so much positive feedback, so many positive comments, that it's just made me want to talk about this topic more. To be honest, I think I've got a bit of a confession to make, and that's that these videos may make it seem like I'm a very altruistic, generous person. I think being altruistic and being selfless doesn't come naturally to me, and I'm definitely nothing like my fiance who is just a naturally very kind and generous person. She will literally bend over backwards to do things for people. She would. Oh, we've got stray dog here. Stray dog has just appeared and uh, now he's leaving. That's all good. She would literally give the bed in our house to strangers if she could. And yes, I have always wanted to do something like this where I come and volunteer in a different country, but really she was the driving force to get me out here. And I'm so grateful that she did because I think my selfishness has caused me a lot of misery in my own life. And there've been some things that have happened during this experience, which have given me a very simple mindset shift. Let me tell you about one of the difficult days I was having last week. So we were in one of the Fiesta event consultations where they hold these big events for the community, where they have music, they have MCs, they give out free food, free haircuts, but they also give out free health consultations. Now as part of the volunteering, I was one of the doctors consulting and I was having a particularly bad day. The Fiesta event is very noisy. They love blasting things on loudspeaker. I was extremely hot. I was wearing these scrubs, which are actually quite thick. I think it must have been like 32 degrees, I was sweating. There was about 100 patients to see, it was so busy, and I was just feeling really agitated and annoyed. On top of this, the midwife who was supposed to be translating for me, she was rewriting the other doctor's scripts, which meant she was quite busy, and every time I wanted her to translate, I felt like I was interrupting her because she was so busy herself. And this obviously made it really difficult for me. I couldn't really communicate with the patients and it was just taking a lot longer than it needed to. I was getting all this kind of pent up frustration and I kept asking myself, why do I have to do this? And then the patient I was seeing stood up, he smiled at me and said salamat, which means thank you. And then I had a sudden realization, which was, I don't have to do this, I get to do this. I don't have to do this, I get to do this. I get to come here and use my skills to help these people. I get to have this amazing experience in the Philippines, which will be one of the most memorable experiences of my life. And simply by changing the phrasing from I have to, to I get to. It just really changed the way I was approaching my whole day. Now, what's the main difference between I have to and I get to? So I have to implies obligation, duty, burden, lack of control, and resentment. On the other hand, I get to implies privilege, opportunity, choice, gratitude, and empowerment. And that doesn't just apply to coming out here and volunteering. And it's something that I'm gonna take home with me and you could probably take it and use it in your own lives as well. Example, I don't have to go to work. I get to go to work. I get to earn money and provide for my loved ones. I don't have to exercise. I get to exercise because I have a fully functioning body. I have a body which is free from disability and free from disease. I'm privileged and grateful to be able to move. I don't have to study. I get to study, I get to learn, and I get to expand my knowledge. And the key takeaway here is, I get to, is I have a choice. I have agency and I have autonomy over my life, which is one of the two pillars of a healthy self. A healthy self approaches life with the lens of agency and gratitude. Dr. Paul Conti. There's like this invisible web flying across the screen. All right, I think it's just gone. I don't know if you can see that or not. So the agency part, the bit we've discussed is, I get to rather than I have to. I get to help, I get to give. The gratitude part is being grateful. It's appreciating what you have. I know it's easier said than done. How can we be grateful? Especially if we feel like our lives suck, if we feel like other people are better lives than us. But I do have an exercise that may help. The Stoic Principle of Negative Visualization. Negative visualization is a mental exercise where you imagine yourself losing something or someone you value or not getting something you desire. This practice helps Stoics cultivate a sense of detachment gratitude and inner strength. And I have tried this exercise before back home where you kind of just imagine not having all the things that you have in your life, all the things that you love, all the things that you take for granted, and it does help. But I'd like to one up on this exercise. Instead of just imagining it, go live it. And actually, I think that's what I've done coming here to volunteer in the Philippines. I don't have to imagine not having running water, electricity, access to basic medicines, healthcare, even seemingly minimal things which I take for granted like air conditioning. I don't need to imagine not having it 
because I've come here and lived it. And I know it sounds cliche saying, oh uh, yeah, I came to Asia to volunteer and it's made me really appreciate the things I take for granted back home. But people wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. And the funny thing is, I came here to the Philippines to help others, but actually I've also helped myself. And I think most people and a lot of people from more developed countries would benefit from coming to do something like this. It literally changed the lens that you see your own life. You don't need to practice negative visualization to live a healthy, happier life. Just go somewhere to experience not having what you take for granted. And if you're interested in volunteering in this part of the world, in Philippines, please let me know in the comments or send me a message via any of my socials at Dr. Chris G. I'd be more than happy to give you some more information or give you some contact details of the volunteer program coordinator. I don't get anything out of this. I just genuinely want to help their cause. I think it's awesome what they're doing and I would love to help them get more people involved. Now, I know there are a lot of Filipinos watching these videos because I've had a sudden influx of new subscribers since posting these last few videos. And I'm so grateful. Thank you for clicking subscribe and watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. But I am fully aware that I may be talking to people who actually don't have the things that I say I'm taking for granted. For example, the running water, the electricity, the access to basic medicine. I do think the Filipino people have something that we really lack in the West. And I actually think that you're happier than us because of it. And that's something called community. And I talk a lot more about this topic in this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Keep training, keep living, peace. I almost forgot the fourth and final lesson. This is the most important one. Do backflips.